Hey, this is Fix Reef, and today we have another um, Radeon Gen 4 Pro XR30 out for repair. This one came in with the um, symptoms that it does not turn on when you power it up. Like it's completely dead, it doesn't do anything. So let's plug it into the uh, lab power supply and see what it does. It's plugged in, and there is absolutely no signs of life. All right. Let's take it apart, see what we have. Sometimes the problem is simply with the fuse, but most times it's just the board or additional LEDs that are blown. On the surface, it looks fairly clean, fairly well maintained, um, very little dust on the uh, very little dust on the fan. Um, nice clean light. Uh oh. <laughs> okay, I think we know what's going on. This was um, at some point uh, in the water. This whole area is completely corroded. Look at this. Wow. I have not had a light this bad yet, so we'll have to see what we can do. Wow. Just wow. Okay. Well, that's a challenge. Let's start taking everything apart and see if any of it is actually salvageable. Now let, let's go straight for the worst one. I do have my concerns with this. There is a whole lot of corrosion. To the point that I'm not sure I'll be able to get this board off without completely breaking things. Wow. I'm thinking that I'm probably going to take it off with the main board and then see how I can separate the two. This should come off fairly easily though, it's clean. Let me zoom in so that you will appreciate what this looks like even without the microscope. So right off the bat, we have just on the LED module, we have a couple of smaller components over here. This whole connector to the main board is all corroded. There is thankfully not a whole lot going on around the connector, but then again, what is the condition of the main board at this point? Yeah, look at this. The light is very, very clean. So it looks like it's a fairly new light. It just happened that that, um, that it was dunked in the water on one side. In one corner even, not even the side. The ribbon cable connector is, of course, right underneath, so... Wow. With that said, this is very interesting. Even the USB port is clean. 
all right so it didn't even go on the corner it literally the water probably got in um, at the top somehow and just across this wow okay well the good news is that the main board um, is not really all that damaged um, it's more than likely that the short caused perhaps some component to to to, to fail here but it's not the main board is not damaged so i think the damage is hopefully for the most part limited to um, limited to the uh, the led module so you can kind of see let me see you can zoom in zoom this in so for you for you to see better the corrosion ate away a few pins on the connector so this connector is likely not salvageable it will have to be it will have to be replaced a lot of corrosion and about four pins two pins are pretty much missing uh, three more pins are shorter than they should have been so so that's what that, that's what this looks like a little bit of corrosion over here but there is not an element of any kind over on this um, not a component of any kind over on this end so so that's that a couple of flies came off of it I guess um, the LED module is of course an entirely different story it's probably still salvageable if I can replace the connector assuming that the pads over here are still mostly intact I still need a few pads for it to work if most of them have been corroded away there is no way for me to attach the, uh, uh, the connector And of course, if we connect, compare the two modules, we can see that there is a capacitor, there is a transistor, and there is a small resistor, zero ohm resistor, uh, connecting a couple of um, traces. So those are likely will have to be replaced for the most part. The same customer sent me two lights that turned out to have the same exact problem. I just took apart the other light that I received from the same reefer, and it had the exact same problem, except that the problem was much more severe. This is the board from the other light that has same the corrosion in the same place, except that there is even more corrosion over on this end and I already scraped off some of this and the problem with this board is that this uh, controller is that's the main controller that controls the light and it, the pins on this controller are corroded without the controller obviously the board's not going to work and replacing the controller is not feasible because you need to reprogram it with the new software and unique serial numbers and whatnot and uh, there is just not a copy of the software available for that chip off of this specific light. So I discussed the problem with the customer and uh, they agreed to use this board as a donor board to fix the other light. And I think that that's going to be an approach for this repair because the left side of this board is fairly intact. Um, so we can transfer the connectors, the connector over to the uh, connector over here we can also use the LED uh, module a good LED module um, off of off of the bad board to use here instead and if there are if there is any there are any issues on this side of the board that also needs to be replaced maybe this diode or whatnot we can also pull it off of this board and hopefully out of the two lights we'll have one fully functional so let's get to it First, I'm going to attempt to remove this connector. This connector is completely corroded out. You can see that, hopefully you can see that the pins are missing. Um, it's not a good connector anymore. So we're going to just go ahead and remove this entire connector. I'm going to get under the microscope to make sure that I do a nice clean removal. I will attempt to remove it 
with the iron first, although it may not be feasible. Let's add some regular solder. And then on the other side, just careful about um, the resistor that's on that side. Now let's heat it up and see if we can lift it. That's it. And it came off. Now I'm just going to clean up the pads. And finally clean up all of the mess. There is some oxidation, there is some salt creep, and some flux that ended up on here from all of the reflow. Okay, this looks brand new. While we are at it, um, I'll just clean up the rest of this board area. Okay, now this board mostly looks like new. All right, some fresh solder.
all brand new sorter up, went on very easily, which means that all of the um, pads are nice and clean. Um, okay. Now we need to get the connector off of the donor board. So this is a nice and clean connector. Um, and I'm going to attempt to remove it the same exact way. First, um, let's apply, apply some solder to mix, bring the melting temperature down and just overall increase the the volume of solder so that it um, stays warmer longer. I do care about not damaging this connector and that's in part why I don't want to use the hot air station. Because hot air is going to melt all of the plastic parts of the connector and that's not what I want to do. I could also use um, the low melt solder on this, but I think that this will work. And the connector is off. Now that the good connector is off, off of the donor board, I'd like to clean it up a little bit. There is quite a bit of excess solder on it. For this I'm going to just use a little bit of wick. I don't have to completely clean this dry, I just want to remove excess. And that looks clean enough for, the, for what we need it for. Now it's time to reinstall the connector. It should fit perfectly well. Yep. We just need a little bit of flux to let everything uh, flow. And let's put it back in. I'll just grab a couple of corner pins so that it stays in place and then bring it all down. Time to test with the pick just to make sure that none of the pins are moving. And 
and I'll use a little bit more flux and a bigger tip just to make sure that it sits down very well. Same exact method, just heating it up from both sides until it drops into place. The left side, for the most part, looks real good. The right side is almost there, just needs, I feel like it needs a couple more um, bits of solder on these pins. That looks really good. And just take it on the left side. Okay, this looks like factory. This looks like factory. A lot of cleanup. There's a lot of flux in here. Now that the connector is replaced, we need to check if the LED modules are all good. We need to get two good LED modules because clearly these two cannot be easily reused. So um, we're going to use these two good modules um, on this light. But first I need to make sure that they actually work. For this we need some test probes and let's do some testing on this light. Let me just make sure that it's zoomed in and you can see. So on this light the violet channel works, the green channel works, others we have to test manually. I'll start at the bottom, works. works. Good. You may not see some of the UV lights coming on because under this um, tester mode they're not going to be very bright but I can see that they're definitely working. Okay, this LED module is good. Now this. Violet is good. Green is good.
both modules are in perfect order. This is excellent. Okay. We can set them aside and focus back on the board. So before I put everything back on, a little bit more to clean. Some of the flux seeps through vias, which happens. Before I plug everything in, I'm just going to test a couple of things to make sure that there are no shorts on some, some of these components. So far, so good. Okay, I think we can try plugging it in. Again, after so much corrosion, um, I am not at all confident that th this light is going to actually work because the corrosion happened over here. The reason this whole area got so corroded over here is because uh, the light was on when the water was uh, seeping in, which means that it caused shorts. I'm actually surprised that um, that all of the LEDs work on this particular unit, um, but it does not mean that all of the channels work because shorts on here may cause damage to the channels on the main board. We'll find out in a few minutes. All right, my test harness is connected. Um, let's power it on. It may not work at all currently, again, either because the board is bad or the light's just not configured to run. Um, if it's got a schedule and it think, if it believes that this is the middle of the night, it's not, gonna, it's not going to come on. Let's try. This is amazing. All of the LEDs actually came on. I turned it off right away because I don't want the um, LEDs to get damaged due to overheating because this board is is uh, not currently heat synced. But looks like it's working. Let's reassemble and test. Of the two lights, I'm going to use the one that's the cleanest to install it into, and even then, I have to I have to do some major cleaning here. I'll reapply fresh uh, thermal grease when the time comes. But for now, we need to do something about all of this oxidation on the aluminum. Not all of this probably can be removed because it's already sort of baked into the aluminum, but I'll try. It's also fairly important to get uh, the dirt off of this pad over here because what happens here is that this pad is going to cool off the relays and inductors on um, on the board. It um, the pad essentially provides heat dissipation onto the heatsink. So we don't want to remove the pad. We don't want um, dirt to be on that pad. Okay, this side is as clean as it's going to be. Now let's talk a little bit about how the unit got damaged. My leading theory is that the water came down. It was seeping through the ceiling, perhaps through somewhere above. It came down through this opening where the, uh, where the, the ribbon cable goes in. It got seeped down and onto the main board and it eventually fried it. It's still not clear to me how exactly the water got onto it. Uh, because uh, the only opening at the top when you have the, 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 uh, the lead on is through these buttons. Um, but this rubber seal is supposed to be tight against the lead and it's not supposed to let the water seep through. The, the water is supposed to just accumulate here. 
Um, the other option is that it entered from the side under the uh, lead because there is an opening here and got in. Say, for instance, if the light was um, next to the wall of some kind and the water was dripping down the wall, it got um, in contact with the side wall of this and uh, and just got onto the surface. But it, it eventually made it through this this opening here, and that's what's uh, what's the what the issue is. Okay, this light is now fairly clean. I'm going to reinstall the board and everything else for it and make sure that it works. Okay, the, the light is partially assembled. Both of the LED modules are in place and secured and um, will be cooled through the aluminum heatsink. It's time to test this. The light comes on. All of the LEDs are on. The fan is spinning. Now let's see. The buttons turn on. Let's see if they actually work to control the intensity. The intensity is going down fairly rapidly. Now let's see if we can increase it. The intensity is high, but only a couple of channels work. And now it's... Let's try it again. Different intensity. Okay, and back. Let me get it back to all of the channels on. and up to the highest value. All right, that's probably the highest I can get out of it. Uh, it's on and it's staying on. Okay, so I'm going to let this light run a little bit longer under full intensity just to make sure that it all um, works as it should. Um, and this repair will be complete. If you enjoyed this um, video, please like and subscribe. And I will see you next time.